Two of the hardest things to get right in my small home studio are shooting full length portraits and getting really even illumination on a background. Both of them come down to the amount of space I have or don't have available. But that's what we're going to do in this video. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. Oh yeah, not only do I want to get them evenly illuminated and full length, I'd like the lighting to be really soft. Although I think I might need to get a bit more creative with my lighting rather than just simply using a softbox, but we'll see. Oh yeah, there's another thing I want to do as well. I want to make sure that I get a full length portrait, but without any weird converging verticals. And I have got the perfect background to show up any slight errors in that theory. This is, well it's not actually a background, it's vinyl flooring, but you'll see how this works out. Right, whilst I'm getting a few things set up, you should click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And whilst you're doing that, let's get a light set, let's get a model in, let's get shooting. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Katie. Katie's going to be the model for this photo session. And as you can see, she is dressed according for the background. It looks really good. Everything is set to go. I've got my light ready. I've even metered this out. So let's take a test photo and see what we get. OK, Katie, I think I'm going to go for a nice vertical photo. We'll go for a nice tight head photo. And that looks really dramatic. I like that. That has a great look with the outfit and the background. I think I'd like to go for a full length portrait because that's what this video is all about. However, space in my small home studio is limited. In fact, it's about 12 feet from the background to the back wall. So I'm going to make use of my zoom lens. I'm going to go for a nice wide zoom. OK, here we go, Katie. Let's take the same shot again. And this time, oh, well, hang on a minute. That didn't quite come out how I hoped. In fact, that looks really weird. The background is all converging. Katie's legs have gone really small and they're in deep shadow. I think we've got a few things to fix here. To fix the problem, there are two parts. The first one is not to be so close to my subject. So that means I don't have to use the wide angle lens. And the second one is to actually lower the height of your camera. So it's not at eye height, it's at the right height. So you don't have to tilt your camera up or down. Because when you angle your camera up or down, you add perspective distortion into your photo. So the closest you can get to horizontal, the better it'll be. Now, I've got a real advantage. I have a background that clearly shows me when I'm nice and straight and vertical and level and horizontal. Let's take a test photo. Here we go, Katie. And that looks so much better. Zoomed in a little bit more, lower point of view from my photography, much better results. The next thing I'm going to fix is the uneven lighting on Katie. So at the moment, the light is at the top and it's lighting her head really well. But by the time we get down to her feet, there is a definite difference in exposure. So one solution you might consider is getting your light and making it more even. So just like I did with the camera, I'm going to put the flash in the middle of Katie like that. So the top is roughly in line with her head and the lower half is, well, close to her knees. It's not going to affect my exposure, but it is going to affect the light output. Spoiler alert, this isn't the right place to put it, but let me show you why. Okay, Katie, here we go. Quick little test photo. And the result, well, yes, it's more even in exposure, but look at that angle of light. It's coming straight up from underneath because most of the light is below Katie's head height. And because I'm shooting from waist height to avoid the perspective distortion, I need to remember if Katie looks straight ahead, I'm actually sort of looking up her nose, which isn't a good look. The solution for even lighting isn't the height of your light, but actually the distance from your subject. The further away I take my light, the more the exposure will even out. However, in my small home studio, I've got to go way, way, way over here without knocking things off the ceiling, out of shot to get it in the right place. And if I move my light, I'll need to re-meter the light. So Katie, I'm just going to pop this near your chin. Here we go. I'm aiming for f5.6. And to get there, I'm going to have to put that light very bright. It's the Explore 300. And even that 300 watt light requires very nearly full power to get there. So we're half power. So that is quite a lot of power coming out of the light. However, it works. Let's see what we get. Here we go, Katie. 
Well, the end result is more even exposure on the background. But if you have a look at the shadow behind Katie, you can see that it is a lot crisper. It's not the soft light that I was after. And soft light is all about size of light. What I'm gonna do might sound a little bit crazy, but bear with me because I've swapped the soft box for a standard reflector. And if I wanna make softer light, how is this small reflector gonna look softer than the big soft box? Especially as if I take a picture with just the reflector, it looks like this. So this is the reason I'm using the reflector. This is a scrim, basically just a translucent piece of fabric. It's gonna increase the size of my light, taking the small light source with the flash and reflector and making it much, much bigger. And bigger light sources are softer light sources. It will, of course, affect the amount of light that reaches Katie. So I'm gonna take another meter reading. Let's see what we get. Katie, I'm gonna pop this near your chin. And once again, I'm aiming for f5.6. And once I've got that, I know my exposure is gonna be correct for the light passing through the scrim. So let's see what it does to the shadows in this photo. Okay, Katie, here we go, quick test photo. And the end result is way softer light. In fact, it's about as soft as I can possibly get in my small home studio. The exposure looks really good, fairly even, unless I go outside the area covered by the scrim, in which case things get very bright very quickly. For length portraits and soft lighting, I've got what I was looking for at the beginning of this photo session. So everything is set up. Katie, are you ready? Let's take a few photos like this. Although some of the light is bouncing off the white walls of my studio and filling in the shadows, the vast majority of this effect is being created by the light coming through the scrim. And if you don't have one of those, I'll talk about an alternative after I finish the photo session. So at the start of this session, I had four goals in mind, which was to take a full length portrait with even illumination on the background, with no distortion and of course, soft lighting. I think I managed to do all four in my small home studio, largely down to the scrim. Now, you don't need something as dedicated as this. I could have used the diffusing panel of a five in one reflector, a large one. I could have just hung some fabric up on the ceiling and used that, that would have worked too. And of course, you'll find links to all of the gear I'm using in the video description below. Of course, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, just leave me a comment down below. They're always great, I do read them. And of course, click on the bell icon. You'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. We have new videos pretty much every single day. And if you haven't already done so, Click on the subscribe button. What are you waiting for? I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.